compares an akazo so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church, but to be empty. The scripture tells you healing is the children's bread. You accept all of these truths, but you are asking yourself, why can't I become? Why does it look like my life is an opposite of everything the Bible keeps affirming? One of the challenges is that we don't train ourselves. In the natural, we train ourselves to become. You are what you are today by reason of many trainings that you have gone through. You are what you are today by reason of many exercises that you have subjected yourself to. But when it comes to the word of God, we either don't train ourselves or we don't even know how to train ourselves. And so when I come next week, I will take time to go deep into this matter. But to give you an idea of what I mean, I just want to show you three areas of training that you must begin to subject yourself to if you will become everything the Bible says you are. Because the Bible tells us clearly that God cannot lie. And so everything he says is as he said it. And it's better you discover it here than discover it in eternity. Because everything you don't discover here, when you cross to the other side, you will discover it. It's a must. God will prove himself one way or the other. So there are three basic areas you need to begin to train yourself in order to become everything the Bible says you are. The first area is to train yourself to gain acquaintance with the presence of God. You must learn to bring yourself not just into awareness but into participation with God's realm and God's reality. This is one area that is deficient in our Christianity. In Proverbs 23 verse 29, the Bible said, To whom belongeth redness of eyes. That's a negative scripture, but it gives you an idea of what interaction does to a man. He said, They that tarry long in the wine. That means your eyes have the potential of becoming red, but that potential can be realized if you stay in the wine long enough. As you continue to ingest wine, a point will come when the impact will begin to reflect even in your natural body and your eyes will become red. So tarrying long in a place has the potential of making you to be acquainted and that acquaintance will affect even your morphology. That's what the scripture tells us. And that's why he quoted from Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 28. The Bible said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? So he's talking to you about the prowess, the capacities of God. He said, he giveth power to the faint, unto them that has no might, he increases strength. So what God has, he doesn't want to keep for himself alone. He is liberal enough to want him to share. He said, but for those who will partake of that which God has, are they that wait upon the Lord. So you must train yourself to stay long enough in God's atmosphere until you gain acquaintance. You know, for those of you who watch football, the moment it is Saturday, as you wake up, even without knowing the match, there is a feeling. Your body, the anatomy, the physiology of your body begins to respond to Saturday. So even if you don't know the calendar, when it is Saturday, there is a way your disposition is because you have acquainted too long with football that it has a resp your body has a response to a particular day because it's a day of football. Those who watch all kinds of drama online, some of these movie dramas, from 6 o'clock, they watch one episode to 7, they watch another episode to, to 8, they watch another episode to... The moment evening is coming, their whole body is agitated. Anything they need to do, they quickly stop it. I have a sister, an elder sister that was addicted. The moment you come home, when it's evening, you start hearing Hindu. They're speaking India because she's watching one series. And they, they, you cheat Hindu. A point came, we started knowing some language. Even we who were not watching. <laughs> so when you hear Namaste, you know they are greeting somebody. It was, we knew it. It's not like we went to read Indian language. But the activity was so consistent that you could begin to infer things. 
when you hear peer you know they're talking love because the peer was much every time you are here it's acquaintance they it, she brought the atmosphere to our realm until the thing began to impart on us so even if you are going upstairs sometimes even you hear yourself say namaste the thing has bombarded you to a long so it became normal a point even came in the house when people greet they do like this they didn't even know when the hands gathered together the thing had dominated it's called acquaintance the bible said they that wait upon the lord something happens to them he said they mount up with wings where does the wing come from you never you didn't know when the metamorphosis took place you didn't know you had wind those potentials were there you know before god told you that you are like him he installed something in you he was not he's not just speaking by his sovereignty he's also speaking by the activity of the holy ghost and what the holy ghost did like he mentioned was that certain things were installed on your inside eternal life was installed the nature of god was installed but it is your participation in his realm that will energize it so when god is talking he's talking because of what he has installed so he expects you through the Holy Ghost to participate until those things are animated. So the realization of what God says is a function of the animation of the things that are on your inside. This is why you are called a witness. You are to confirm and to prove that what God said is true. But you see, you have a journey as a witness to embark upon. And that journey begins with participation in God's realm. And so the first thing about participation is to stay until you gain acquaintance when you stay long enough even humans when you stay long enough with people you can perceive the aura from them you can perceive their body you know aroma the moment they are around you know if you pick any shirt that they wore you will know who wore it you can tell when they speak you can discern their voice from among a million people the reason is because you've been around and most times it's not just the ability to discern when they speak there is an emotional trigger that comes out of you when you are around people who are kind to you anytime you remember their name you smile you don't even know where the smile comes from that smile is an effulgence it's a response of who they are as you have perceived them this is what must happen to every believer but you see participation is a warfare because when you want to stay you will now discover that many things we want you to be an alien of that civilization distractions begin to come even your body at first will rebel to that atmosphere because you are not used to that environment if you enter the water now you are not a fish after a few seconds you start struggling to come out you know why your system is not used to that environment but if you begin to dive begin to dive after a while you will discover that your capacity to stay will begin to increase they said those who are navy seals they can stay under the water for about a minute plus because they have trained for a long time so they are now used to the environment if you begin to stay you will discover that the rebellion in you will break but that is one thing that you must teach yourself if you will ever become what the bible says you are paul said in first corinthians 9 27 he said i beat my body I bring it under subjection because when I go to worship my body wants to watch a movie when I go to pray my body wants to sleep when I want to fast my body wants to eat but I understand that for me to become what God said I must condition this body to stay in that presence because I must be taught by the presence because the presence itself has a language and that language although inaudible but its impact cannot be denied when you stay in God's presence, a point comes like radiation. The presence of God begins to alter even your molecular structure. And a point will come when you can discern God's voice. You can perceive God's presence. And you will see that certain dimensions in you that were dormant will begin to be activated. Those are the things the Bible calls your wings in the spirit. The things that make you ascend from your realm into God's realm. So you begin to function not by the energy of the flesh, but by the abilities of the spirit. That's why it said they that wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings like the eagles. When they run, they are no longer weary. When they walk, they no longer faint. Meanwhile, he told us already that even the youth shall faint. The young men shall utterly fall. So you are functioning by an energy that is now divine. But for you to get to that level, you must have stayed for a while. 
and so the ability the first training that a christian must build is the ability to compel himself to stay in god's atmosphere if you don't train yourself to stay in god's realm you will discover that you'll be frustrated even when you read the bible because you'll be seeing what the bible says that you cannot confirm in your own lifestyle you cannot confirm in your own experience this is where the first warfare of victory and transition begins from the capacity to beat yourself to stay see when you get there and distraction comes stay there until the distraction dies down if you feel like sleeping sleep and wake up the bible says, why men slept the enemy sold so if the devil walks why men slept god will walk even much more there's no nothing wrong in sleeping in god's presence when you are done sleeping stand up continue because you are trying to cultivate something if you don't if you don't know this hmm, you will run in and run out and your life will remain the same they will impact you it won't change your story you will quote scriptures it won't change anything because you have not been cultured to function in the civilization that god brings to you and so the first type of training that everybody must develop is the training of staying the way god taught me because when i started Staying stretch was a bit difficult. So God taught me to break it into hours. And so I will stay for 30 minutes and do what I want to do for two hours. Come back, stay 30 minutes. In a day I discovered I've been able to stay for three hours. And as I mastered it after a while, God increased the duration. I will stay for one hour in three hours. One hour in three hours. And God kept building. A point now came, I can lock my door and stay there for three days. And I don't even know it's three days. As I came to London now, this is the first time I'm coming out of the room since yesterday. I don't need to go anywhere. There is stamina in God's presence. I have trained myself. So even if the noise is going on outside, I'm more fused to what is happening inside than what is happening outside. I will go out when I have business. I don't go to wander around. There's nothing out there that satisfies more than what is inside here. I'm telling you, the visible world was crystallized from the invisible world. If you think there's beauty in the world, search God's presence. He said, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, they dwell in that realm. And as you begin to stay, after a while, your senses will be activated. God will begin to show you things. God will begin to whisper things to your spirit. And even dimensions in you will begin to wake up. And you will now discover that the Bible is not a lie. The first training that you must give to yourself. Listen, this is different from Bible school. This is your own journey with God. You must beat yourself, master the presence. It could be prayer, it could be meditation, it could be worship, it could be fasting. I don't want to, whichever God begins with you, just make sure you are able to subdue your flesh. Let the rebellion of your flesh die. The Bible said the flesh wars against the spirit. And they said the spirit against the flesh. And they said the two are one against the other. But you must make sure that your spirit win the battle. And the place you win the battle is not when crisis come. It's in the presence. That's where the battle begins from. I'm telling you, when you get home now, try to pray for 30 minutes. You will see the ancient battle that exists between spirit and flesh. We wake up immediately. The arena for that warfare is in the presence. It doesn't happen anywhere else. But for you to become what God says you are, you must fight that battle there and make sure the spirit has supremacy. This is the first training that every spiritual man must undergo. The ability to win the battle over the flesh in the presence of God. And that's the only way, the only place flesh can be mortified. He said, and Samuel hewn Agag to pieces in the presence of God. Agag is a type of the world system. It's a type of the flesh. It was in the presence that Samuel tore him apart. That is how you decimate flesh. And that is how you become a spiritual man. I'm telling you the dimension most of you carry. If they wake up, you'll be afraid of yourself. Most of the things we try to force, they are not supposed to be forced. They are supposed to be gushers. They flow out of us. They flow. Healing should flow out of you. Wisdom should flow out of you. Favor should flow out of you. But they are locked. Those chambers have not opened up. Because you have not mastered how to give the spirit man supremacy. The first way and the first training of a spiritual man is the ability to tame the flesh and insist that the civilization of the spirit will not be alien to you. You will be there. When you are there for a while, 
If you walk past the market, if God's presence is in any location, you can discern it. People are not singing. They are not playing keyboard. But if you pass, you will know that something happened here. If an angel is standing in a place, if you come there, you will know that an entity from another dimension is here. You know, those days I'll be in church, a pastor will be preaching and say, ah, they, an angel is here. I'll say, ah, <laughs> angel, when did he come here? <laughs> oh, God, take it easy. <laughs> How did angel come here so quick? And supernatural things will begin to happen. And then I'll be sure. Could it be that what this man said is true? And I will just live in that confusion. You can't discern it because you are using emotion. You are using suspicion. Those things can't work in that realm. You have other senses that are dormant. If you train yourself long enough, you wake up. When I came into the UK, let me even give you what happened today. I went, I came into the room. My friend came and he said, Ah, this is the right temperature, room temperature. I said, What do you mean, room temperature? I'm wearing three garments. You say, This is the right temperature. And I looked at him. I said, You came here barely a year ago. What's going on? Some months ago, you and I were wearing cardigan. You know what happened? He's, even the brain, the brain is now sending signals that this guy is in a new territory. So the physiological processes have been altered. Now, for him, seven degree is normal. But not for me. Because I, I, I've not been here long enough. But if I stay here for five months, you'll be shocked. You'll see me with polo. And I'll be strolling. Uh, how you doing? You, you, what happened? I, I stayed. As I stayed, things began to happen. That's what happens to you in God's presence. When you stay long enough, you will know that you too can see angelic beings. You will know that when the Holy Ghost speaks, you too can tell. You can discern when the power of God is flowing and you can channel it. It's called the training of a spiritual man. This is what makes us become mighty, representing God anywhere we find ourselves. Begin to train yourself with the presence of God. The easiest way to start is worship. I'm giving you a formula now. You know what? Worship is you taking advantage of the strength that others have gathered. You know, when somebody worships, he's worshiping from a realm. When you come into that space of that sound, what has happened is that that person has deployed his own strength to you as an advantage. It's like somebody giving you a ladder to climb a building. Or somebody's up and is trying to pull you up. It's not your labor. He's the one bringing you to that realm. That's what worship does. The guy fasted. The guy prayed. And he caught a song in the spirit. And he sang that song. And that song became a ladder. So you now, so, some of you, you even finished quarreling with your husband. And then as you were going to the bathroom to shower, you now start hearing, I need thee every hour. And you start crying. You start saying, God, I love you. Your space was, you, you were hijacked. You are, your world is currently contention but they brought another atmosphere into your space and hijacked you you didn't know when you transitioned from animosity and anger into brokenness and weeping that's because you are tapping from somebody else's energy that's the easiest way to begin the journey of training yourself so spend time worship worship if you open my phone now you are going to see different playlists there are those that are called hymns they are high praise there is there are some i call floating realm there are others i call transitions it depends on the i i select the music that have those dimensions and i align them so i move from one to the other i move from one so there are times when i'm just on my earpiece and my eyes are closed i'm floating with people who have opened the gangway in the spirit and they are carrying me they are carrying me they are carrying me and the point comes i begin to hear god and i can do that for three hours before i start praying that's the easiest way to transition. You are using somebody else's energy. You are riding on somebody else's anointing. You are entering a door that somebody has opened. But you can't remain there because you may not be very strong. The reason is because when you come to a place where you don't have those access points, you can't join it. So when you start that and the realm begins to draw you, there are certain impartations you will receive. On the strength of that impartation, move to the next level. Begin to pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you think you have prayed. You now check, it's 10 minutes. It shows how rusty you are. It's like a fat man going to run. 
when he's breathing, breathing, and you come, you may think, ah, this guy have gone 10,000. No, he ran to 20 meters. <laughs> the flesh is much. No, he's breathing. Ah, ah, ah. You'll say, ah, have you been running on a marathon? The marathon for him is 20 meters. If he runs 100 meters, he will fade. But you see, if he continues, he will do 100 meters for two weeks. After a while, when he runs 100 meters, he won't be tired again. You know why? Cholesterol has been burnt off. The volume of oxygen supply has increased. It's at 400, he will now pant like that. After a while, it's after 2,000 meters, he will pant like that. A point will come, if he's consistent, you will see him going for cross country. And then you are wondering, when did you become like this? They said the elders told us, inconsistency lies the power. So when you do worship where you are aided, enter tongues too. You too pray your way into that realm. Pray your way there. As you are tonguing and tonguing and tonguing, when you are tired, add some music, receive support, and then continue tonguing. A point will come, you discover your bandwidth in that realm will increase. So your tiring capacity will grow. Now your focus is not time. Your focus is, focus is transition. But time is something you can't do without because you are a creature of time joining into eternity. So every time you come back, there will be a reference. But your idea is where you are going to, not where you are coming from. That's why you won't benchmark with time. Make sure transitions are happening. And as you are doing it longer and longer and longer, you will see that you are becoming more and more like him. And then add fasting. Because... Fasting will help you sustain the atmosphere even when you go out from the place of prayer. Because the propensities you have in the flesh, they are strong when you are in order. If you eat well, you, you, you want to have fresh air. If you eat well, you want to visit a friend. Sometimes the reason we fast, and that's why the Old Testament calls it humbling yourself in fasting. Those many ideas you have, you want to watch football, you want to go and visit a friend, when you are hungry, there won't be much. <laughs> so what you are doing is that you are limiting the capacity of flesh so that you can stay in the spirit. You are limiting the capacity. Have you seen hungry people running around? No. When people are hungry, they are sober. They want to think. So what fasting will do is that the atmosphere you have built, in order not to dissipate it, fasting will help you to be be, 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 be. You, you'll be organized <laughs> you'll be circumspect in your dealing so put fasting in your weekly manual or menu begin with one, one day fast in a week, then make it two then make it three so that periodically you are exercised unto godliness and then meditate on scriptures carry verses of scripture be talking it to yourself be talking it to yourself the Hindus know this better you need to enter some monks. People chant for 16 hours. Because they know the power of these things. When you talk certain things to yourself, a point come, those things alter your, your frequency, your soulish frequency. They can alter you. This is what fallen beings know. But in light, we have not understood those things. When you are talking the word of God to yourself, you will enter the frequency of the Rema word. That's why I say this book of the law, Joshua 1 8, should not depart out of thy mouth. He said, meditate upon it day and night. He said, see that you observe to do what is written therein. He said, you will make your way prosperous and have good success. So master those things. These four things, they are the trainings of the presence. They are the trainings. When you do that, then come to the second level. Is the faith training. Is the faith training. I'm teaching you things that can change your life forever. Train yourself about God's presence until your propensities are awoken, then train yourself in faith. You know, the way God's presence works is if you train yourself to a level, hmm, you will notice that the speed with which you transition will be very fast. So, number one, you can tell if what somebody is doing is spiritual or flesh. Somebody is singing, you just know this is not God. And the song may be very slow and emotional. But you're, you are discerning from another level. And if you come and what somebody is doing is spiritual, immediately things will be on it. You can see a vision. 
you are broken so broken that you are weeping you know this is beyond emotion the anointing begins to move you just know because you are active then train faith how do you train faith you train faith through number one revelation see any area of your life hmm, that you know is of significance go and look for what the bible say about it and master it until you think that way any area of your life that you know is consequential i'm teaching you how to train your faith you know we all have faith the problem of the new testament christian is not faith it's understanding lack of understanding romans 12 verse 3 the bible said god dealt to every one of us they measure they that means the faith you require for a successful life was given to you and everyone who received christ the measure of faith and jesus said if you have faith as tiny as a mustard seed you can move mountains so the problem you have is not faith we all have the measure of faith and to even stir your heart much more the measure is the measure of faith that christ had paul was speaking in galatians 2 20 he said i have the faith of the son of god and peter was speaking in second peter 1 verse 1 he said we all have like precious faith so the faith peter had is the faith paul had and is the faith of the son of god and that's the faith you and i have and paul was speaking in second corinthians 4 13 he said according as it is written they believe and have spoken we have been the same spirit of faith so your problem is not faith the problem is that your faith is not trained and it's not exercised but the first way to train your faith is to give your faith understanding and the way you give your faith understanding is through revelation so you go to the bible and find out what do you do when you are sick and you look at what the word of god says and you begin to tell it to your face so you can begin by saying by his stripes you are healed your faith is learning it see it's like the way ai works when these ais are designed they have very dangerous capacities but they train them they give them instruction they practice it the way the ai trains is that if you design an ai let's say a basketballing ai and you want it to net the basket you put it in different locations and give it the basketball it will throw it anytime it nets it will record that program anytime it misses it will record it that pathway that missed it will never repeat it again that's what the, that's what increases the precision of an ai the one that it misses that path will be blocked forever so anytime that ai is in this location it will only use the pathway that netted it will never use the paths that missed so if the ai is standing there 10 out of 10 it will net so the way you train the ai is that you make sure every part of the field the ai must throw the ball until it nets so anywhere that ai is now standing only the parts that net will be active all the parts that fail will never be active if you don't take that ai around the whole field it will still be missing until it goes everywhere and is acquainted with everywhere so it will delete the parts that missed and save the parts that scored and so the ai will become 100 percent effective that's how they train ai machines the same thing applies to your faith if you don't teach your faith what the bible said your faith will not be active so the first thing you need to do is to show is to educate it he said by his stripes we were healed so our predominant confidence is not drugs our predominant confidence is the stripe of jesus and your faith will probe further why is it so that's why you see your spirit will be troubling to get justification and then you educate it further the reason you were susceptible to sickness in the first place is because you were guilty of sin and so sin exposed you to sickness and you could not fight sin because sin you could not fight sickness because sin denatured you so the elements of god on your inside that you war against sickness are no longer there because sin denatured you but now that christ took away the judgment of your sin a new nature was installed in you that nature has the capacity to resist sickness 
when your faith understands it, any time sickness is coming, even before you know, your faith will rise up. You will now discover that the rate at which you fall sick will start reducing. You who used to fall sick every week, you discover that it will become two weeks. After a while, three weeks. After a while, two months. And you are wondering, what's going on? Your faith is already raising a defense, even without your knowing. Because every revelation that went in energized your faith. So the first way to train, the second way to train yourself is to train your faith. And you train your faith by educating it with the revelation of the world. The same applies to your finances. It applies to everything about you. Even the anointing that we operate in here, we have to teach our faith that this thing is in us and this is how it is activated. And so anytime you want to operate in it, so long as that pathway is open in your spirit, you see that the action begins to take place. So you have faith, but you must train your faith. That's why Paul said, according as it is written, they believe and have spoken. So we discover the pathway of activating faith is by talking. He said, we too, we believe, therefore we speak. We have known that this is the channel. So we talk to see action. But before we talk, we believe it. They believe, that's why they spoke. Those are corridors of revelation. So if I believe, the next thing to do is to speak. And as I train myself that if I speak, I will have the results they have. After a while, my faith will conquer it. And when I do it, I will see answers. You need to educate your faith. Most of us have dormant faith that are not educated. And so in the middle of crisis, we want to believe, but we don't know how. And then finally, you must master to take action. If you don't take action, you will never become what the Bible says you are. In James chapter 2 verse 19, he said, Thou believest that there is only one God. He said, Thou doest well. He said, The devil also believes and trembles. He said, but oh ye vain man. He said, don't you know that faith without works is dead? That means you may have faith, but it may be likened to a dead faith if he has no action. In verse 26, he said, as the spirit without the body, as the body without the spirit is dead, he said, so also faith without works is dead. So he's telling you that action is a must for you. You say you are favored, but you have not attempted anything to see the power of favor. And you have not put demand on favor. How will that favor speak? You say you are anointed. You have not prayed for any sick person. How will you know if that anointing is there? You say you are the light of the world. You have not gone out to win souls. How will you know you are the light? And so there are dimensions sitting in you, but they are not deployed. If you want to train yourself, you must train yourself with action. I started praying for the sick. No one was healed. It took a long time before I started seeing the sick get healed. And the more I prayed, the more healing increased. The more I prayed, the more healing increased. If you want to become what God says you are, you must train yourself to dwell in his presence until you become used to his presence and until your propensities are activated. If you want to become what God says you are, you must educate your faith through definite revelations. And if you want to become what God says you are, you must master the art of taking actions, corresponding actions to faith. This is how we become in this kingdom. Otherwise, you will come to church, hear messages, go back, and never become. A point will come when crisis hit you, you become angry with pastors. And say these people lied, they psyched us. When there was crisis, we didn't see any of the results they spoke about. In fact, those things are not true. And you'll be justified in your anger to yourself. Because all you know is all you think there is. But there's a way of the spirit. This is how we become in this kingdom. Are you ready to pray? Some of you, as somebody... As somebody stood up and walked, you must turn. That's how you train yourself. So you can't even stop, even in God's presence. <laughs> That's the same way you need to train yourself in spiritual things. When you train yourself, you can't help it. It will flow out of you. Have you been blessed tonight? Yes, sir. Lift your right hand where you are sitting. What do you want God to do for you? 
Ask for it now. You know, some of you have not even trained yourself to believe that God blesses people. You know why? Because everything you ever needed, you worked for it. So the only thing you understand as a channel of getting what you want is by work. So when they say, you don't. That's why some of us were in Africa, it became a blessing at some point. Because many things we needed, we couldn't afford. So we started teaching ourselves from school fees. Lord, provide these school fees. Have mercy, have mercy. So before we left school, we already know that God can bless people. So now that we are growing in life, everything we want, we say, Abba, Father. <laughs> Some of you, we need to teach yourself that, yes, God answers prayers when people pray. I don't have insurance where I'm coming from. If your car is bashed, you have lost it. That is if you come out with your life. So I need to trust God that there will be no accident for 10 years. So I'm driving with a consciousness that I won't, I can't have accident. Because I'm not ready to lose the car all my life. There's no insurance anywhere. So I've been driving without accident by faith. <laughs> There's no insurance company that will show up. If I buy somebody's car, we pay for it and lose money. So in addition to being careful, I'm driving by faith. That's how you train yourself. If I tell you now that God will heal somebody, how do you think I'm sure? I've done it too many times and I've seen God respond too many times. So my faith can easily respond when I say so. If I tell you if you leave this meeting, I'll be back next week Sunday. If you are not blessed in seven days, come and tell me I'm fake. What will give me that audacity? It's not because I'm a preacher. It's because I've said it several times and people have been blessed. So when I say it, my faith can ride on it. But you don't have to be a preacher. Train yourself. Lord, as I'm going out today, show me that you favor men. And you are walking the whole day with a consciousness that there is something you can't do for yourself that favor we do. And when you return, you recount your day and find out how many supernatural things happen. That's how you train yourself. As I'm going out today, if I see anybody sick, I will pray for him. Lord, if you heal the sick, heal men through me. And you are beginning to do it. After a while, you'll discover that the anointing will start flowing. Train yourself. Train yourself. A point will come when even if you don't want to, you can't change it. It has become your status quo. That's why I say train up a child in the way that he should go. He said when he's grown up, that he can make a lot of other decisions by himself. He said he can't do it anymore. You have no choice but to follow the path that you showed him. Father, we ask for a shift that is a shift indeed. For every hand lifted up here tonight, Lord, I ask that in the next seven days, give them a definite visitation. They have come before you with situations that they cannot handle. But they have looked upon you as their source. Abba Father, because they have relied on you, I join my faith with theirs. And Lord, I decree every petition that they have lifted before you tonight, even before we gather here again on Sunday, let there be a definite answer. In the name of Jesus. And for every one of them that will dare trust that you will change their circumstances. Lord, I ask by the anointing of the Spirit, let there be a radical turnaround for them in the next seven days. 